but the government's really going to do it, then that really happened. Tell us the plot, and this is off their official website, of Ghost Recon 2002. Well, yeah, this actually came out in 2001. It was released on Xbox in 2002, but the story took place in 2008. By the way, I remember reading the synopsis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The story took place again in 2008, and it was U.S. Special Forces sent to Georgia to combat... Read the game box. They say in 2008... Uh, Russians go to combat in Ossetia, and, and then U.S. forces go in to help them. The exact place, the exact time, uh, seven years before with Tom Clancy's video game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the really spooky aspects of Read this the whole is, thing like you did during the All right, sure. Ghost Recon begins in 2008 with civil unrest in Russia. Ultranationalists have seized power in Moscow with plans to rebuild the Iron Curtain. The first step is clandestine support of rebel factions in Georgia and Baltic states. This is where the ghosts come in, to silence the rebellion. Armed, uh, armed with the most advanced weaponry in the world, the soldiers of Ghost Recon force and covertly inserted into Eastern Europe and then given specific missions to curtail, cur curtail the rebels' actions and overthrow their benefactors. Uh, the game storyline stems from political turmoil that can be in the light of the last few years in which ultranationalist regimes came to power and placed its leader, Dmitry Abertov, as uh, Russia's president. Uh, by 2007, the threat uh, posed by Arbitrov administration became clear. Russia, Russia forms an alliance uh, called the, the Russian D Democratic Union, which is made up of previously conquered countries of the Ukraine, Belkrest, and Kazakhstan. Together, they launch a campaign to revive the long-dissolved Soviet Union by taking back so so former Soviet republics. But in reality, this was taken from Russia. Russia has these small mini-republics, and they were the ones that were attacked. They've been there since '93 under a UN deal. So, listeners, a sneak attack Thursday by Georgian U.S.-backed military forces against Russian enclaves. Thousands dead, Russian dead troops. Russia fights back to kick them out. The fighting is still raging. And you turn on our news, they'll just mention, oh, Russia attacked Georgia. George Bush and uh, Barack Obama say it's terrible. Again, we're not even choosing sides here. But the U.S. shouldn't be preemptively attacking areas of Russia, killing Russian troops, and then lying in our media, telling us that Russia needs to stop its attack. And then the wor world leaders, you know, are hand in hand at the Olympics. It's it's very weird and suspicious. And I think it's also ironic and it started on eight eight eight. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's also ironic that a lot of the uh younger people in special forces may have actually played this video game when they were fourteen, fifteen years old. I mean this was a popular game. That's the preconditioning. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what I thought. I mean they literally were preconditioned for this same conflict and now they're there and the remnants of that video game are in their mind. Well they knew they I mean, I mean just what Clancy says, quote, I get my best in plots from intelligence. Just like the makers, uh, Chris Carter, uh, with uh, X-Files and Lone Gunman said, yes, they're giving us these plots. Why is the government giving them plots and saying there will be a war with Russia started up uh, in Ossetia, the very place it happened, this tiny enclave of a million people? Uh, this will happen in 2008, and then it happens. <laughs> yeah. And then it's the U.S. preemptively running the attack uh, with the Georgians as their front. And there's a ton of promotion in the game for things like the United Nations and NATO. You know, again, promoting world government, preconditioning the populace and our military to accept that sort of thing. It's, it's normal to them. You know, they, they have been preconditioned now, Alex, for this large conflict. And let's hope the rest of the game doesn't come through because this is a larger Russian conflict. This only spans larger. I mean, it only gets more. Well, larger. everybody's watching in the scores of nations that ring the former Soviet uh, Union where NATO and the quote, international community using U.S. taxpayer money, we can't just say it's the U.S. doing this, have moved in everywhere and have moved weapon systems in, missile systems, radar systems. They've been giving them tanks, helicopters, jets. And Russia continues to stay, stop it, stop it, stop it. Meanwhile, U.S. deplores Russian action in Georgian conflict. The White House said Sunday that it deplores Russian actions in the Georgia conflict as dangerous and disproportionate. We're alarmed of the situation, says James Jeffrey, U.S. President George W. Bush's Deputy National Security Advisor, told reporters in Beijing where the President was attending the Olympics. Jeffrey said the United States would be very, very concerned if reports around Russian ground attacks in Georgia were accurate. See, and, and you read that article, they just leave out that Georgia attacked them and is still attacking them. It's like, how dare Russia be involved? Now, let's not forget, at the end of the last Serb conflict, when Clinton uh, had the Muslims out of Albania attack the, 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 the uh, Slavs um, in the Slavic state of Serbia fight back, the media then said that Serbia had premeditatedly attacked Kosovo, which was part of Serbia, which is ridiculous. Uh, then there was the head of NATO 
uh, General uh, Jackson gets a call, and Wesley Clark has ordered U.S. fighter bombers to bomb Russian troops who tried to take over and landed at the airport in Pristina in Kosovo. Okay, it's back in the late 90s. And uh, Clark had given the order to attack Russian forces with bombers. The Russians peacefully landed, took over the capital, and said, you're not going to take part of Serbia and give it to Muslims. Okay? And, and the crazy part about this is always, we're fighting the Muslims. We're fighting, no, no. They used the Muslims as the shock troops to take over country after country after country in Eastern Europe, uh, Central Asia, the Middle East. They overthrow secular nations in the Middle East using Muslims. So it was the same story, and back under Bill Clinton, they tried to launch an attack on Russians. Folks, we don't want to go to war with Russia. Okay, I mean, I know everybody's disconnected from reality in la-la land, uh, but uh, this is just absolutely incre insane, Jason. It is absolutely insane, and before the show we were discussing motivation, and, you know, I can't help but think this is really to demonize Russia and maybe take the focus off of us as a world power in the Middle East, you know, maybe take the focus off of us as being the sole problem in the world. And not just that, two more, there's already two there, carrier attack groups, are rampaging into the Gulf right now, according to the AP and Jerusalem Post, in a preparation to attack Iran. So it's getting Russia tied up in a conflict ahead of that. This could shape into World War III. We'll be right back. I have scanned hundreds of newspapers, and even the Washington Post is not reporting on the fact that Georgian-backed, U.S.-backed forces attacked Russia Thursday night on the eve of the Olympics, knowing that would be a smokescreen. U.S. troops are reportedly involved in the attack, mass-murdering Russian troops and civilians. But the Austin American statesman did get it right. They have a bunch of diversions here about unlicensed bus carried 15 to their deaths, the Olympics... But then under it, Russia, Georgia at brink of war, hundreds die. It's now over 2,000 alone in one city. This breakaway Georgian province, AP, this is today, Russia dispatched an armored column to the breakaway Georgian enclave of South Ossetia on Friday after Georgians. A U.S. ally launched a surprise offensive against South Ossetian separatists. Witnesses said hundreds of civilians were killed. Let me read that again. Georgia launched a surprise offensive. Now remember, this is a demilitarized zone. These are areas that have always been part of Russia. Two large enclaves. Nothing violent was going on. There has not been any fighting since 1992. Russian troops have been there in the 90-plus percent Russian enclave. And Georgia launches an attack to drive them out. Now, people are asking, what is all this about? Why is this happening? The pipeline war. Russia... Bear goes for West Jugular, UK Daily Mail. Now, of course, BP owns that pipeline. They men mention that later in the article. So, again, still a uh, deceptive headline like Russia went for something. That's like if you get mugged, an old lady's getting mugged, and she beats the guy away from her with her cane or with her umbrella. Is the headline, old lady attacks innocent man? No, it's old lady attacks mugger. But, um, again, Georgia has today withdrawn its troops from the capital of South Ossetia, according to reports. And uh, it says, a day after heightened international tensions, talks about the Russians trying to bomb the pipeline. Let's go ahead and take some phone calls. Before we do that, Berman, anything else you want to add? Not really. I, I mean, I was just looking at this other story where it's now come out a CIA officer has said that uh, Cheney likely ordered the forgery of the Iraq 9-11 letter, the one where they tried to say, uh, you know, Mohammed Atta had met with them. And well, ABC Senator News is reporting it's not likely. He, he, the CIA guy has said they were ordered to falsify a letter saying Iraq launched the anthrax. Yeah, and, and, and Douglas and, Faith, and, actually, Douglas Faith uh, is the guy who wrote it up. I mean, it's unbelievable that these criminals still walk around and have, you know, are just adored by the public, Alex. It, it makes me sick. Well, they're not adored by the public. It's, yeah. it's an illusion that the public adores it. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel guess there's like, 25 percent that does. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like those that don't adore them aren't doing enough to get them out of power or bring them to justice. It's it's few and far well, it's between. It's come out. They ordered Robert Mueller, head of the FBI, to blame the anthrax attacks on Iraq, knowing, of course, they launched the attacks. Mm -hmm. They were on the separate of the drug that fought it and all the rest of the evidence prior to it being released. Uh, they've ordered the CIA to create fake documents with Mohammed Atta and Iraq. Mm -hmm. And, and it just comes out. I mean, it just came out in mainstream news last week that Cheney wanted to stage attacks on our ships. I mean, the, 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 you know, 
They're cold-blooded killers. But Alex. a lot of the public who does support this thinks they're part of the elite and they're part of the system. No, they're going to take your pension funds, your freedom, your dollar, your future, too. You're not part of the elite. This criminal group's going to hurt you as well. And don't think Barack Obama's going to save you. I don't know who's first up here. Who should I go to first? Uh, let's go to uh, line one, Jesse in Canada. You're on the air. Go ahead, Jesse. Hey, what's up, Alex? On a uh, worldwide radio show. All right. Um... Been drinking or something there. Uh, Kevin in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? Good. I just want to say, uh, as soon as you're telling us about that audit that's coming up on September 30th from the uh, International Bank of Settlement, I knew this was going to happen. I mean, uh, we had this on September 10th when they announced the $2.3 trillion missing, and they needed the distraction. That's right. The AP reported that someone in the Pentagon stole $1.9 trillion. It's now $3.9 trillion from all the military pension funds are gone, and then they staged 9-11 two days after that came out. 